and welcome to Kilbride Church, St. Richard's Church, here beside the very busy Enelema. It's the first Sunday in Lent, and you're very welcome to join us in our service this morning. So, come on in. Lent begins. Help us to take time to draw closer to you, to find ways to be silent and aware of your presence in this world and in our lives. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 9 verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud and it should be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it, and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 to 22. For Christ died for sins once and for all, a good man on behalf of sinners, in order to lead you to God. He was put to death physically, but made alive spiritually. And in his spiritual existence, he went and preached to the imprisoned spirits. These were the spirits of those who had not obeyed God when he waited patiently during the days that Noah was building his boat. The few people in the boat, eight in all, were saved by the water, which was a symbol pointing to baptism, which now saves you. It is not the washing away of bodily dirt, but the promise made to God from a good conscience. It saves you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone to heaven and is at the right-hand side of God, ruling over all angels and heavenly authorities and powers.
Dear God, I would love to be back at school and able to hug my grandparents, but I know you keep me safe and love me. Amen. The Gospel this Sunday tells of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. It's particularly interesting that the evil forces attempting to destroy the Messiah first went to work on his human needs. The physical world can certainly outcry the spiritual at times. As we enter this time of fasting for many, Jesus assures us that we will be deeply satisfied if we trust in him, as he will nourish us with all we need. What areas of your life do you need to give up? Place these now in the hands of the one who will help you and nourish you by his presence and grace. reading from Mark chapter 1 verses 9 to 15. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. At once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness and he was in the wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news.